what's going on guys welcome back to another video where in today's video we are going to be going over the invisisphere racing kit and how to use it so if you haven't already go watch the invisisphere vehicle controller quick start guide as that will cover a lot of what makes up the invisisphere racing kit as it pretty much revolves around that vehicle controller and adds some additional features to it i've gone ahead and created a empty project here and I've installed and imported the InvisiSphere racing kit. I've also done all the configuration by clicking window InvisiSphere configure project, window InvisiSphere install center machine, and then window InvisiSphere install new input system. After you do this new input system, it will ask you to restart the editor, click yes, and then you should be on the same page as me. First, let's, let's make sure our, our vehicle controller is working. So let's just open up the demo scene. Make sure we are able to drive. Everything's working. Now let's open up the AI vehicle controller demo. Press play to make sure that the AI vehicle controller is driving around the track. It is. All right, so what makes the AI work? What's different than a regular just vehicle controller? Not much. So it needs a vehicle controller to work. So if you look at this AI vehicle controller, it looks identical as just a regular vehicle controller that you would drive. So for one difference, this user controlled flag right here needs to be unchecked. All right. And then the other is the AI vehicle controller component. So add that to it and it will use the vehicle controller to work. Assuming that you have your track set up and all the checkpoints set up correctly, it will work. What happens if we don't have checkpoints set up? It just won't drive anywhere. And I'll show you that by just disabling this race manager game object, which has all of our checkpoints down here called waypoints. So if we, if we disable that and there's no checkpoints, if we disable this race manager, which means we disable all the checkpoints and we press play, nothing is going to happen. It's just going to sit there and we're going to get a bunch of errors spammed. Yeah, he's just sitting there. Can't drive him, can't do anything. So how does this work? You need a race manager first. So you need to create an empty game object. Name it whatever you want. We're going to name it race manager because that's what it is. We're going to attach a race manager component to it. And you can set the number of laps you want the race to be. And then you've got this checkpoints list right here. Ignore this as it self-populates with checkpoints on start. It looks for checkpoints as children within this game object. We need to create children with, within this game object. And we're not going to make the checkpoints one by one. We are, but we're not going to do them manually. We actually are going to attach a waypoint manager to the race manager with a waypoint manager script and we can add waypoints this way and it's a lot more powerful uh faster and easier to use than making checkpoints one by one and adjusting their scale rotation position all that crap this does a lot of that for you and we will see that in just a few minutes so we're going to set up a new track with some new ai and we're also going to set up our own vehicle controller we're going to set up everything completely it's going to be cool so it should give you a a really good understanding of how to use the InvisiSphere racing kit. All that being said, let's do that. Let's go create a new scene. I'm not going to save this one. So we got a brand new scene. What we are going to do is I've already imported a track that I want to set up. It's just the classic Mario Kart Super Nintendo track right here. Actually, I've got it in Blender right here. So yeah, really simple, really easy, flat as can be. So in another video, maybe I'll do one that's a lot harder to set up. But for now, we just need to do a quick one. And we're also going to be setting up some AI. So I don't want this video to be too long. All right. So yeah, we need to go back to Unity. I've got the track right here. Drag it in. Right click it. Prefab. Unpack completely. Let's look at the track by selecting it and then press F to focus it. Or F to find, whatever it means. I don't know. I'm going to rename all this stuff just so I know exactly what it is. This is like the inside, I don't know what to call it, inside OB 
inside OB barrier. Outside OB barrier. That is the road. And that is the terrain. All right, so whenever you import a new track, you need to set the road and the terrain at least. You could set everything if you wanted to, but I would recommend just doing the road and the terrain. Just anything that you could drive on. So well, you shouldn't be able to drive on this inside part here and these barriers on the inside and on the outside. So I'm not going to worry about those, but just this road and this brown terrain. Well, let's name it plain because it's not really a terrain. But yeah, you need to select those and you need to make their layers, the layers of these ground or else the controllers won't work. Then we need to drag this one up. I don't know why it's lowered like that. That looks pretty good. Pretty good. So now let's get our guy working first before we set up the checkpoint and everything. I'm going to set up a new vehicle actually. And I'm just going to do that just like in the quick start guide. I'm just going to go to prefabs. And then I'm just gonna drag in a vehicle cart. Way too big. Instead of adjusting the cart size, I'm actually just gonna adjust the map size. Yeah, let's make it a little bit bigger. All right, so we've got our cart. We adjusted the size of the map so it looks like it fits better. I'm gonna unpack this cart completely. And I'm just gonna rename it to just vehicle. So yeah, and I've also got these Foxhole Mario Karts. And who do we want to be? I like Yoshi. Yoshi's my man. We're going to be Yoshi. We are actually going to hide the track right now. Just so we can focus on our vehicle. I'm getting a little distracted. Now we're going to make Yoshi a child of the vehicle. She needs to be bigger. We need to rotate them. Pretty much what we're doing is we are just making Yoshi centered. Because the model doesn't matter for these vehicles, just for appearances. So if the rotation's off, if the scale's off, none of that crap matters. Just adjust it so it looks right. I'm not even gonna mess with the colliders. Just gotta turn off the demo cart. And then if we go back up to our track, turn it back on. All right, so now we need to go back to Invisisphere Racing. Prefabs, we need to do our Cinemachine camera. Prefabs, Cinemachine camera. And in our Cinemachine camera, we need to, to assign our tracking target, which is going to be our vehicle user. And one more thing we need to do is on the main camera, there is no Cinemachine brain, so we need to add in that. Oh, and on the Cinemachine brain, you need to make the update method fix update and blend update mode fix update. Because if you don't, it's going to look a little jittery and you're going to be like, man, this controller, I thought it was going to be rock solid, but it's buggy as hell. It's jittery as hell. It's not the controller. It's the camera. It's the way the camera's updating its, its position. So you need to change it to where it's updating its position in the fixed update as that will sync it up when the vehicle moves. Because the vehicle uh, moves in the fixed update as well. So anyways, just trust me, set that to fixed update and we should be able to drive now. And we don't have a collider on the track. So that's fine. We are just going to select all of these. We're just going to do a mesh collider. Physics material, let's do road. And let's try that. All right. Can't go. Let's see what I do. I think it's because I it's something to do with the input. The control. Oh, yeah, we got to sign the input action. Duh ground we need to set the ground this rotate just a random note this rotate tires manager i'm just gonna get rid of it because like we can't rotate the tires anyways because this is all one model we got yoshi driving too fast so all right so there's just one thing i want to play around with for a minute oh he just like floats to the ground it's only when he hits like a small bump it's because he's still grounded he's still registering as being grounded this distance to ground check is, is too high. Let's go to 1.25. It's a little better. We go, that's better. So if you see some behavior that you don't like right away, don't assume that there's something wrong with the controller. It's probably something just with the settings. But see, that's the downside about the lower you make that, that ground check, 
the worst it'll do on, on bumps and stuff. See that right there? There we go. So we probably need to raise it a little bit. Let's do 1.15. Pretty good. All right, 1.15 it is. In order to make checkpoints, like I was saying earlier, you need a race manager. So we're going to create an empty, name it race manager, reset a position. We're going to add in a race manager component. We're going to right click race manager and we're going to create empty to add a child game object. And this is going to be the waypoint. And we are going to add in a waypoint manager. And then we're just going to hit add waypoint. Now, the first one can be hard to find, so just go over to the left and you'll see the added a waypoint zero underneath waypoint manager. So just select it and press F to find it in the scene. And you want the first checkpoint to be right after the starting line, right after the finish, finish line. Don't worry about the size. Don't do that manually. Don't adjust the height. Don't adjust the rotation or scale. Just get it positioned. Just worry about the center point. Just get the center point where you want it. All right. Now hit, go back to waypoint manager. Hit add waypoint. That's what I hit add component, add waypoint and put it way out here to the left. It's going to put it 25 units to the left or right, whatever. 25 units on the X axis offset from the previous checkpoint. So yeah, and the closer you can put these checkpoints, the better you don't got to get carried away because can be overkill but if we put this checkpoint way out here it's the ai is going to take a more jagged path so it's all about this green line right here you'll see a green line connecting every single checkpoint is that that's going to be the path that the ai takes it'll round it a little bit but for the most part the green line is the path and then that's it you just keep hitting add checkpoint and it'll automatically connect the last and the first one for you like a loop so you can see a little triangle right here. So the more checkpoints we add, then the, the loop will be more accurate. Obviously just, you'll see, I'm just going to crank this out. Oh, also the rotation, notice how it automatically rotates these checkpoints. It's going to automatically rotate them pretty much the way you want them. You'll see, but yeah, I'm just going to crank these out. Not really going to talk. Here we go. Oh, and the size, I'm not worrying about the size right now. Cause look, you can just adjust that later so i just want to get the position of them right for right now if i make them too big right now it's going to be harder to work with and we can't really tell because it's a flat track but it also automatically aligns these checkpoints to the ground for you so you don't have to position them just right and yeah the turns you definitely want to make the checkpoints closer to one another and it'll make the ai's turning a lot better straight areas you don't have to make them as close to one another because it's really just not necessary definitely won't hurt anything though all right looks like we got all our checkpoints made got them we got them closer together on the turns not quite so close on the straight parts so yeah now you can see they're a little bit too small you can see the rotation of them it's like perfect though like the more you put down then the better the rotation of them all gets so how many checkpoints? We got about 50 checkpoints just under that. But we need to make them bigger. So let's make them plenty wide. I will make them like really wide in case you go way off the track. Height isn't as, as important, obviously. You just got to be able to touch them, touch the checkpoints. See, this is why I waited until the last step to make them big. Because if I'd done that, it would have been a nightmare trying to position all of them. Yeah, I'm going to hide them. By turning off gizmos all right and now we need an ai vehicle we should be good on the checkpoints i want to go to prefabs drag in an ai vehicle prefab unpack completely already at zero i'm just gonna press f zoom in on it i actually need to turn on gizmos but i'm going to disable the game manager so i don't have to look at Let's disable the track also. All right, so we got our AI vehicle. I'm just going to delete the model. And let's go back here. Who do we want to race? Let's race Mario. Prefab. Unpack completely. Drag that as a child of the AI vehicle. Oh, I shouldn't have deleted that freaking 
thing yet. Yeah. Hang on. Prefab, unpack completely, and now make them a child of the AI vehicle. Need to rotate them. Now we can scale them way up. Now we can get rid of this other model. We can just hide it. We don't gotta delete it. Probably need to tweak the colliders for Mario a little bit. So AI vehicle, go down a box collider. It's not bad. We're probably, since we adjusted the size, just like in the vehicle controller quick start, whenever you adjust the size of a collider of the prefab, probably gonna wanna play around with this stuck manager. So in order to do that, we're gonna turn debugging on. And so now we can see these rays that are being cast out to the sides and on the front. That's actually pretty good. We just need this top one in case he gets flipped. You see how it's too short? It needs to come out the top of this collider in case he gets flipped. This ray can hit the ground and then it can tell the controller, hey, you're upside down. You need to fix yourself. So yeah, we just need to go up to upside down, ray cast length, then that should be good. All right. Now we can turn on the race manager, or not yet. We can turn on the track so we can position him. Wrong thing. AI vehicle. Add a little Mario thing so I know exactly who he is in case I add more. All right. All right. I think we got it. I think we got the AI set up correctly. So sit play. See what happens. Nope. AI vehicle controller. Good. Huh. I don't know what I did wrong. Your vehicle. Sauce position. Model box. Oh, I got race manager turned off. Oh, he is smoking me. You need to turn down the speed. But he's working. He is working. It's good. Try to cut him off. All right. There's something else, though, because we're not seeing any UI. Probably got added on to my vehicle user. Yeah, we need racing vehicle, and that'll give us our UI. So add a component onto your player if you don't have one already called racing vehicle. Hang on, hang on. I need to lower the speed. This is too much. Google user, forward speed, 11, and then AI vehicle Mario. One out of two. Lap two out of three. three. Out of three. I made Mario way too slow. Four out of three. So yeah, it works. I see. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So we can just keep adding in more AI players if we wanted to, but I think y'all get it. Y'all get how to do everything. I think this video has gone on long enough. That is how you use the Invisisphere racing kit that's how you set up a new track with checkpoints that's how you get the ai working and yeah i think that's all i got you guys so if there's any questions or anything just drop them in the comments or send me an email and i'll be glad to help you thank you so much for your interest in this and supporting me it really means a lot to me and i can't wait to bring you guys more in the future